President Joe Biden signed an executive order on the southern border. The sweeping measure shuts down the border when a daily average has been met. It also stops migrants from claiming asylum if they enter the country illegally. The new director of the Greater Portland Immigrant Welcome Center is now speaking up against the order. Faisal Khan says the policy is dangerous and would send people back to the violence that they were trying to escape. Greater Portland Immigrant Welcome Center provides a range of services for Southern Maine's immigrant community. This includes interpretation help, language classes, nutrition and business support. In recent years, Maine has seen a surge in people seeking asylum in our state. We sat down with the center's new executive director who says that his organization can support Mainers and people who've been here for generations at the same time. This comes after an extensive nationwide search. There are a lot of people really pleased that this organization is now going to be under your, your leadership. And yeah. the perspective that, that you bring has a lot to do with your human rights advocacy. Yes. And the organization that you founded, the Carolina Peace Center. Yes. Can you share with us some of your, your background there and, and your work? Sure. You know, so my, my work in, comes to, in terms of the human rights and civil rights goes way back, you know, decades of work. And I've been very passionate about you know, the, the conditions of humanity, the people. And, and that means everybody, regardless of your background, your race, color, ethnicity. And, and as I got more and more involved in terms of civil rights, in terms of constitutional rights in this country, you know, I felt that it was important to represent everybody. What does it look like now in, in your current role finding that common ground in outreach to community organizations and municipalities within the greater Portland area. It's immigration and migration is really such a, a flashpoint issue right. where it so is. many people um, you know, are welcome to see these families and individuals come to our area but are balancing the concerns of strains on social service agencies and government agencies. Yeah. What does the outreach look like? The key is, is that this has put a lot of uh, responsibility on resettlement agencies and mm -hmm. organizations organization like us, where we need to provide support, we need to provide resources to help these people integrate in our system, you know, whether going to school, going to colleges, you know, uh, learning how to drive, finding a job, learning languages, things of that nature. And we have to make sure that our elected officials from all parties uh, understand that, that these people are here just not to sit and do nothing. They're going to integrate into workforce. They're going to pay taxes. Their kids are going to go to colleges. And we are seeing already that, that a lot of people from immigrant community are running for public office. They're already in public office and city councils. So that's, to, to me, it's like, you know, they're really participating in our, not only in our economic system, but in our democratic system. What does the future of migration and immigration to the greater Portland area look like under your leadership and the influence that you will have. Yeah, so we're growing, you know, from 2003, 2023 to 2024 fiscal year is about 841 from 413 and from the refugee. And that does not include asylees because refugees are coming through a resettlement process. Mm -hmm. You know, asylees are literally at the border uh, right. asking for asylum to come in, which is their fundamental human rights, right? So I think that given the fact that we're growing and Maine is growing and Portland is growing, you know, um, that's, I think that the possibility of more immigrants and refugees coming here, societies coming is going to grow, continue to grow. But we also have to keep in mind that we have a population of homeless population that we also need to address. Uh, we have also a housing crisis right now that is ex ex exponentially gone up. Hard for anyone to find for a place anybody to have place. Yeah. And for a lot of these immigrant people that are coming here, they don't have cars, they don't have license yet, uh, they don't have jobs that are sustainable to provide that kind of a quality life. You know, and the other part is the public transit, public transportation. I really hope that our elected officials in, in Portland and greater Portland can come together and, you know, come up with a better solution. And we have these conversations with people who are experiencing homelessness in Portland as well. And sometimes a sense of frustration is expressed that there are certain populations, immigrant populations who may have access to emergency shelter that they, in, in their view, are not able to tap into, which you know, represents a, a sentiment that some people may feel, the perception that why are these people getting something free yeah. that I don't necessarily have access to. Yeah. And I know that you've talked about serving not just the immigrant community, but, but everyone. How do you handle those difficult conversations in, in finding that yeah. common ground where people who maybe have been in Maine for generations of, of trying to convince them that you know, for everyone here, that, that immigration is a good thing. Yeah, I think one of the things that is really important for people to understand that we are, you know, we are fabric twined together. You know, we're part of one humanity. And we cannot help one group of people and, and ignore the other. And so I want people to understand, I know that a lot of people have very strong sentiments 
when it comes to immigrants and refugees. And that unfortunately trickles down in our political policies as well, including the rhetoric and the narrative sometimes we see. But I'm willing to talk with people who have different strong views against immigrants and refugees and asylees. I'm willing to sit down, invite me to your church, invite me to your community centers, invite me to any faith group. You know, I'm willing to sit down and communicate.